guys, welcome to Chippy Chick Wedding Edition. This video is all about my engagement ring. I love my ring so, so, so much. And the ring was not a coincidence, was not accidental. I pretty much knew which ring I wanted. And thank goodness, because after the fact, talking to my fiance, the idea of uh, an engagement ring for him was completely different to what I wanted for myself. So at some point I was a little unsure about being involved in the picking of the ring because in my head is like, oh, you know, the surprise factor and and I don't know, like there's something romantic in my head attached to like this, this whole thing. Um, but uh, you know, you're gonna wear this for the rest of your life it has to be something that you like and sometimes the other person really doesn't have the same taste or they don't really know what is it that you like so um first off i'm going to give you a total shocker here i don't like spending a lot of money on things that don't have the value for me i know i know you did not see that coming right so you must think well you know your ring looks fancy um that must have cost a little fortune and it did cost some money um, which for some people might be a whole month worth of rent so that is kind of crazy when you think of it like that when you put it in that in that context but it did not cost nearly a fraction of what it could have or what a, a similar ring would cost so um, let me walk you through my finding of the ring my my whole uh, process and the research I did so I was I thought to myself you know I love bling I love everybody looking at my ring I want something fancy something that looks really expensive but then I start looking at diamonds and like a little tiny mini and the tiniest tiniest little diamond ring like in my opinion blah like in one little stone on a regular setting uh, was near a thousand dollars and I'm like no I mean this does not look what, like what I want to and it's so expensive I, I cannot get myself to even look at the kind of ring I would like on a diamond because I would not be able to afford it or I mean God forbid my boyfriend back then now fiance uh, even tried to get a ring like that I would kill him I it's I could not wear on my finger a ring of several thousand dollars so i started researching online looking at alternative gemstones or um what to do and so i was uh, looking into obviously the first thing you think is okay uh cubic zicornia because it looks like a diamond so i was like well this is perfect i you know i'm happy but then reading about it i understood that perhaps at least for me would not be the best option because uh I, I hope I can hold on to my ring until I die. And uh, cubic, cubic zicornia is not that durable. And as a matter of fact, I have some rings that are uh, of that material and I have them for several years and the gems are becoming opaque and uh, not as reflective. So apparently the material is way less resistant to everyday wear and to you maybe bumping it towards, hitting it towards something. So will start getting damaged and getting opaque and that's something I did not want I did not want to think of changing my ring in a few years because it just doesn't have all the all the sparkle and all the beauty I wanted I wanted this to be the one and only ring so then I was uh, looking into clear quartz into um, other clear gemstones but it was either not sparkly or not durable or both so things that were very soft in terms of you know when you wear every day you're gonna bump things you're gonna hit things and uh, it's gonna be down to the ring being damaged so accidentally i kid you not i'm just like here googling like crazy i come across moissanite i hope i'm pronouncing it properly but uh, you will see it written in the in the title of this video moissanite is a game changer for me it had all the things i wanted and including the price tag so 
Let me give you a little background about moissanite and who makes it and how it came out to exist on planet Earth, at least what we know. So I'm not expert in moissanite, but I'm gonna tell you what I learned through the reading I did. So there was this archeologist called Henry Moisson and he was excavating um, a crater from a meteorite. And he found this substance, which he first thought it was diamonds, but later on, it, after analyzing it, it became to be known as what we now call moissanite. It was called moissanite because of his name. I'm not sure how early or late in his life he learned what he actually had found, but that's where it comes from. So the original moissanite is, is some chemical material that comes from meteorites. So it comes from outer space, which is super, super cool. But it's very, very rare to find it here on Earth. It's not something that is uh, very common on Earth. I have read about other places where you can find moissanite, in a natural state, but it's super rare and to actually get it from there will be very expensive. So through many, many trials and errors, someone was finally able to reproduce moissanite in a lab. And the first people or company that got a patent to commercialize this material for jewelry is a company called Charles and Cobart. Charles and Cobart is the company where I got my ring from. So Okay, this is pretty much the background story. I went on their website, started looking for what I wanted. Ever since I could think of being engaged, I wanted a, a princess cat gem. So I knew it had to be princess cat. I started looking into the, what they had and I fell in love with the ring I currently have. So I pretty much told my boyfriend that I had picked a ring and he's like, okay, send me the link. And here we are. <laughs> I'm finally engaged. I'm so happy. <laughs> So anyways, uh, I said the F word, sorry. So what are some of the pros of getting a moissanite? Okay, so there are several things that you measure when you are talking about a diamond and I'm gonna kind of compare them to moissanite, diamond and moissanite. First thing is the hardness. So diamond is the hardest rock, the hardest gem uh, that currently exists. It's used to cut um, glass and other things because of that property. Well, what comes right after and very, very close is moissanite. So in a scale that I don't really remember what it's called, but it's a scale that measures that hardness, diamond is a 10, moissanite is 9.25. And other gemstones are below that. So this is the hardest that you can find, which makes it super durable and it's what you want. You want this ring to last forever. Another thing that is probably the thing that you will notice the most about any engagement ring is how much it sparkles. And it happens to be that moissanite sparkles way more than a diamond. I mean, not extremely, more but it is more sparkly than a diamond now it's not the same kind of uh, effect for the untrained eye I believe that if you look at them side by side or really like on an, somebody's finger you wouldn't be able to tell uh, you probably you, if anything you think you think that uh, the moissanite sparkles more but if you actually train your eye and you know how to look the difference mainly between a diamond and a moissanite is that the moissanite reflects light in a rainbow uh, way. I'm not sure how to put this, but I, I believe that when the light hits it, you get more of a rainbow effect than the diamond. The diamond, I think there are some factors uh, that can make it look like that, but not as strongly, it's mostly white. So don't get me wrong, when you see it at the light, you don't see rainbows, you see it white, but the cast off that the light uh, gets uh, it, when it hits objects, it, it has uh, that refraction factor to it. So for me, that's not a problem. I actually want the most bling possible. So when I heard that moissanites were blingly, blingier than diamonds, I was like, yes, yes, I want to shine like, like, you know, like a disco ball, I don't care. So that was a major plus. So we have harnessed pretty good above any other stones that are not diamonds and uh, sparkling more than a diamond, different though. So if you are into, it has to be exactly like a diamond, it's not exactly like a diamond, keep that in mind. Another thing that at least for me is very, very important is the fact that these gems are created in a lab. Therefore, they are conflict free which we know that I think more and more people are now conscious of that. Therefore, um, the companies that sell diamonds, they're staying away from uh, diamonds that are taken from mines and they're more and more doing them in labs or in ways that are not um, involving 
human exploitation. There is a big problem with the way um, diamonds used to be produced and some they are still produced and uh, that's a topic for another <laughs> video perhaps but if you've seen the movie Blood Diamond you probably know more about this. Anyways, uh, so moissanites are free of any of that stigma. They are produced pretty much in a sustainable way and uh, no human exploitation is involved in the making of these beautiful gems. So the last thing and here comes the pride is the price guys. I've seen in some websites that a diamond ring can be as much as 10 times more than an equivalent moissanite ring. I'm not sure I have read on other places that it's a 3 to 1 ratio so uh, a, a ring exactly like mine but being diamond will be three times the price. So anywhere I guess between three times and ten times is the price difference between what you would pay for a diamond ring versus what the moissanite ring cost. So why don't we take a close look at my ring now and I will tell you my final thoughts. A couple of months after my ring was purchased Charles and Cover redid their website and with that they took out of their inventory some of their rings and that includes mine which for me I think is a big plus because I feel like now my ring is vintage and uh, no one else can get it anymore which I'm all about sharing actually I wouldn't mind anybody having the same ring as I do but now that ring is not made anymore now they have one that is very very similar and I will link it in the description box in case you like mine and you want to get the one they have now but so you know the ring that I got is called Ovation. The gem on this ring is just under one carat is actually 0.90 carats and it has little moissanite gems all around it. It's white gold and another thing that I got very lucky with is that when I got it they carried size 4. I am a size 4. It's very tiny and they actually had four and a half as well. Now when you go to the website they have sizes starting on five and up. Therefore I don't know what happens if your ring uh, finger is, if your size is smaller than that you might want to contact them and see if they would make a custom fit for you otherwise you are out and that is not good. Also throughout the years they were able to make these gems more and more colorless. So originally the first gem they came up with is uh, it was called Forever, Forever Classic I think and then that had a little bit of a yellow tint to it. After that they produced the Forever Brilliant and finally the Forever One which is their clearest gem. Now when my ring was purchased there was no option for the Forever One. You could get the yellowest um, gem which was the classic or pay a little more for the Forever Brilliant and that's what I got, I got the Forever Brilliant. And I have to say that if you look at this ring out, um, for example when I'm in my car and look at it I can see a greenish tint to it and sometimes when I'm outdoors I see a little bit of yellow. In the beginning I was a little bummed about that, I wanted this to be super super white no color whatsoever but now I got used to it I don't care most of the times you don't see that if you're indoors you definitely don't see that it's only under very special conditions that you could pick up a little bit of color and I'm okay with that now if you go to their website now with the redesign that they have you will see they don't have the same classifications as before now you can get the forever one colorless which is from a letter D to F in the grading of color uh, that's applied to diamonds as well or the near colorless which is G, H and I. So I don't know where my ring would fall on those classifications. It will be the near colorless probably um, but I'm not sure if it's a G, an H or an I. So that's pretty much all I have to say about my engagement ring. I hope this was useful for you and if you were on the fence on whether to go for something that is not diamonds I definitely definitely recommend moissanite. My sister-in-law also got a moissanite ring and it's gorgeous. Hers was the colorless and I kid you not there is no color and under any circumstance it's gorgeous. Everybody gets gives us compliments on our rings. I don't even think it's not diamond. Really when I'm wearing it to me it's the diamond. It's it's what I want. I'm totally in love with it and I will go ahead and leave as many details 
about Myring and about um, Charles and Colbert in the description box so you can check that out. I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.